Hey, this is Jordan Palmer. Today, I'm gonna to draw a correlation between quarterbacks entering the NFL draft and brands trying to scale. The last couple months, so we're heading into, we're in Q2 now, and the last couple months, I, I've spent a bunch of time um, outside the office, um, working on a hobby project, passion project slash business, um, that anybody who follows us and any of the friends who are watching this probably know a little bit about, and some folks who just like watching Taylor talk and love that content may have heard even less about, but um, I get an opportunity every January and February to train some of the top quarterbacks leaving college football, helping them go into the NFL draft. And, um, and so I wanted to kind of take a step back and, and, and talk a little bit about how there actually is a correlation between um, the time that I spend with those young men every off season and, uh, and what we do here at Common Thread Collective. So we have, if, if you know Common Thread Collective, you know that, that um, we talk a lot about helping entrepreneurs achieve their dreams. Uh, it's on the walls in here, it's on the first slide in any pitch deck, uh, employees who work here, uh, it's something tangible and real. And, um, and, and folks that are on, being onboarded or potentially looking to work at Common Threat Collective, it's something they hear five minutes into the conversation. But there's also a direct correlation between the time that I spend with quarterbacks. So I really only train quarterbacks that I, that I think identify themselves as entrepreneurs. And so what I wanted to do is, is uh, talk a little bit about what I did in January and February. And, uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull two players that I worked with. Uh, and then also kind of show where the correlation is at Common Thread Collective in terms of what we do for brands uh, and pull some, some examples out of there and, and kind of show that um, you know, my time investing in these two different things is, is, is actually trying to accomplish the, the same mission. So when we talk about helping an entrepreneur achieve their dreams, um, and, I, and I, when I say that I, I, view, I work with quarterbacks who, who view themselves as entrepreneurs, uh, I want to use two examples. So Kyle Allen and Sam Darnold. So a lot of people watching this, if they pay attention to football at all, they probably know who Sam Darnold is. Um, and, uh, and, and then a portion of the people know who Kyle Allen is. So I'll give you 10 seconds on each of these guys. Sam is from San Clemente High School. He played at USC. Uh, he was the third pick in the draft by the New York Jets. He's going to be the face of the franchise for the next 15 years. Kyle Allen was a top high school recruit, went to Texas A&M, um, kind of got punched in the stomach with the, by the coaching staff. Things didn't go his way. Transferred to another school, got punched in the stomach again in a different way. Um, and really just had a, a, a crappy hand, hand of cards dealt his way. Um, but they're both of the same goal of going and being a franchise quarterback in the NFL. And so the correlation here between them and uh, those two players and, and brands is they have the same aspirations, they have a different starting point. So Kyle was undrafted, was signed by the Carolina Panthers. And what's fun about this is we'll look back on this piece of content and maybe I'll, 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 I'll check back in at the end of the season and, and we'll see what these guys did with it. Because what I say to quarterbacks is you cannot always control when or how you're gonna get your opportunity. You can only control how prepared you are for it when it does come. So let's look at, so we have Sam and Kyle over here on the quarterback side of things. And in terms of current clients for us, um, you know, we have a client in um, in Born Primitive. This is a brand that started by an active Navy, uh, SEAL Team 6 member, uh, Bear Hanlon and, and, his, and his wife. Uh, they've been running this business. Um, they're a young brand, have great product, have great assets, uh, really cool story behind it. And it's, uh, it's a CrossFit apparel brand that um, is loved by the employees here and, and a lot of their consumers as they're really starting to scale. Um, and I would, I would map that against um, uh, you know, a company like, like Theragun, uh, another client of ours, who um, from a financial standpoint is well backed, they've got uh, a premium product and, um, and have been able to really grow really aggressively. So when you look at that, the goal for Theragun and for Born Primitive is the same, it's to maximize their opportunities. So whether that's a, just a, it's a combination of addressable market, it's a combination of coming up with as many products and different SKUs as they can, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a product of making sure that the content that they have, for the money that they're spending, they get everything out of that content. And with the ad spend that we're putting behind those brands to help them scale, making sure that it's as efficient as possible, um, all the way down to the nerdy marketing stuff like the marketing efficiency rating and uh, cost per acquisition and cost per click and all the things that go into scaling online revenue. So if we look at Theragun and Sam Darnold, 
Theragun started off hot and they had a great head start. They have a phenomenal product from day one. Then they came out with a second product. It's even better. Um, they were well backed and they had a lot of support of really, really good ownership team um, from the founder, Dr. Jason Worsland, to um, Ben Nazarian, the president, um, to the early people who were on there. They had really, really talented people. They were, they were going to get a really good, honest crack at it because of the resources that they had. The people, financially, the product, the IP, um, and the addressable market. But then with Born Primitive, they're getting into a very crowded space. Reebok has a stronghold on it. Noble with the shoes. And there's just so many brands in CrossFit um, that are, are clawing for market share. And a lot of people would argue that CrossFit as a whole is actually declining a little bit or, or it's been pretty stagnant. It's, it's not, you know, it's bur the bubble burst for, for CrossFit a few years ago when it really peaked. Um, and so it's a really noisy, crowded space. So when I look at Theragun and Sam Darnold and I look at Born Primitive and Kyle Allen, um, you know, my, our, our, when I say my role, I'll say a Common Thread Collective's role in helping these two brands and my role in helping these two players, it really comes down to helping them maximize their opportunities. So when you look at those opportunities on the quarterback side of things, um, you know, Kyle, because of his entry point into the NFL, undrafted, they didn't really give him a ton of money to sign. They didn't use a pick on him. They didn't invest tens of thousands of dollars in scouting him and identifying him. Versus Sam Darnold, where they used the number three pick. They traded from six to three, so they gave up draft picks to even get to the pick to take Sam Darnold. He's gonna make you know, tens of millions of dollars guaranteed in this first contract. There's, there's coaches' jobs on the line with that pick. There's front office people's jobs on the line with that pick. And so when you look at a guy like Sam and his entry point into the league, Sam is gonna get a longer leash. He's gonna be able to fail more than Kyle is going to be able to fail because when people don't invest picks and money and their jobs are on the line with a guy like Kyle, every minute, every rep he gets, every throw he makes, every interaction he has with coaches, every interview he does, they all matter. He has to extract as much value out of every opportunity he gets as he can because he doesn't know when the next opportunity is gonna come versus Sam Darnold who can afford to have, make some mistakes, be a little slower to learn things, make a few, you know, have a few issues in terms of onboarding stuff or, or processing information or screwing something up here and there. It's not that big a deal. Tying that back on the brand side of things, Theragun, because of the situation they're in, you know, we can, you can have a, a, a dip in this and, um, and uh, have a delay on manufacturing. Any of these things that, that could arise with Theragun because of the situation and the growth that they've had and their entry point into these new markets, they're able to have small individual sacrifices that will not affect the overall strength of the business versus a younger brand like Born Primitive where every dollar has to matter. And so when you, the, uh, you merge those, two, those four things together and you look at it as a whole, the goal for me as a coach, but really the goal for a Common Threat Collective is to help brands maximize every single opportunity they get. A dollar is an opportunity. A piece of content is an opportunity. Working with a, selecting an influencer and activating that influencer is an opportunity. Big time meetings, a new buyer, new manufacturer, uh, investor, those things become very, very important. And so what we try and do is treat everybody the same. I train Sam Donald the exact same way I train Kyle Long. No, no extra content, no extra reps for Kyle. He's gotta be prepared to take advantage of every single opportunity he gets. And so if Sam can take that same mentality, he can have a longer leash, but if he can, if he can get to the point where he never needs the extra length on that leash, then the overarching goal here is for them to maximize their opportunities, but really when you dive down to the root of it, is to help them reach their potential. And the potential is, on the brand side is addressable market. The competitors that are coming in, the competitors that have been there, maximizing every dollar, it really is just about reaching your potential. And so regardless of the entry point in, because at 4x400, we're starting from scratch. We're, we're not even Kyle Allen, we're Kyle Allen in high school. We're starting from scratch. So what's great is that we get to help brands who have had a lot of success find more success, but we've created an environment here where we actually are still in the garage and we're still sewing things together and we're still drawing things on a whiteboard talking about ideas for new brands. And so we're able to actually take the methodology and the experience that we have of scaling brands and apply that to 
things that we're starting ourselves where we are the startup, we're the high school kid who has big dreams. And so I just wanted to take a second to kind of dive into what, those cor what the correlation is there. Um, because anybody who follows us individually on Instagram, we're gonna go, okay, Jordan does the football thing. So I just thought it was important now that it's over in the draft and everything was really successful for those kids um, to kind of tie those two things together. And to put a bow on it, you know, it, it's about maximizing your opportunities and it's about reaching your potential. You know, to have a certain dollar figure for a brand um, in terms of like a revenue goal, I think it's a good thing to have goals, but the reality is you may undershoot that, that you, you may have dreamed too small or you may have dreamed unrealistically big for that stage. And for a quarterback, you can have a goal of trying to get drafted as high as you possibly can, but once you get there, you're starting from scratch. We've all heard of Tony Romo, who came out my brother's year. My brother was the number one pick. Tony Romo didn't even get invited to the combine. We've seen these guys, these Kurt Warners, these Tom Brady's, and when it comes to football, these guys where their entry point was not the same as others, and they created an environment for themselves where it ended up not mattering what their entry point was. And we've all seen a lot of these brands. Not non-current common thread clients even. You, you see these brands where you go, man, there's a bunch of reasons this shouldn't work. There's a bunch of reasons that um, I probably will have never heard of this brand and yet you might be wearing that brand right now. You might be using that product right now. So I really challenge entrepreneurs, anybody who's watching this, who's either working on a brand or um, on behalf of you know, an agency or, or client service work or they're freelance or anybody who's actually in the garage right now or, or even if some of our clients are watching this, or, you know, I, I think to always have that mindset of trying to reach your potential and, and taking time to separate yourself just from a revenue goal or from a, a deadline that you want to reach and really Taking time to think about what is my potential? What is the potential for this project? What is the potential for this brand? And how do I maximize every single opportunity that comes? Um, because it's pretty cool. You know, there's some cool brands up here that just have, have seen exponential growth. They've, um, they've reached their potential. They're on the way to reaching their potential. And, uh, and every year I get to work with some of these young quarterbacks who are the faces of franchises. You know, Sam's essentially the, the most important employee of a two or three billion dollar company. Uh, and he turns 21 next month. And so I always tell guys, and, and for any, anybody who's involved in a brand that's young and early, Kickstarter, startup, any of that stuff, um, a sports psychologist friend of mine, Trevor Moad, had a great line that I use all the time, and, and I, I like to tell people, if you're good enough, you're old enough. Thanks a lot. <laughs>